So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 subject test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. Three, what is the radius of a sphere with center at the origin that passes through the point two, three, four? So uh, the sketch doesn't come with a problem. This is just something I drew up to kind of help us visualize this. Um, if you see this, right away you should be thinking, okay, this is a volume, right? We're dealing with a sphere, so this is not 2D. And we've been given a point on the sphere, which is 2, 3, 4. So that's um, three numbers, so it's got to be three-dimensional space. What they want to know is the radius of the sphere. So we're probably going to use the distance formula, but we have to use the distance formula for 3D, which accounts not only for the X and the Y coordinate, but also for the Z coordinate. Let's do a quick sketch here. We have the point 2, 3, 4 on the sphere. So I'll go 2 units over on the X axis, 3 units up on the Y axis, and then 4 units forward on the Z axis. It's kind of hard to visualize the three dimensions with the Z axis coming in and out of the board. Just bear with me. I'm going to put this point just up here. I know it's kind of arbitrary, but let's imagine that that is our radius. And they want to know the length of that radius. Well, that radius is part of a... You could almost draw a box and show that this is one corner, and then diagonally on the other corner of the box is the origin. So that would end up looking something like this. Where we could suppose that one corner of the box is the origin, 0, 0, 0. And then diagonally, completely opposite, right? Because it's in the back, on the right, and on the top, totally opposite this, would be this other point. That's the radius. You could imagine that box as being right in here. So if this thing has dimensions of 2 on the x-axis, 3 on the y-axis, and 4 on the z-axis, then that diagonal distance is going to be dictated by the distance formula, as it is here. And in 2D, we say that it's x squared plus y squared square root. That's the distance, right? But now that we're in three dimensions, we have to tack on a z squared and keep that under the square root. And that's how we get the distance. So, And also, if we really wanted to be truly general with this, this x would be the difference between the x-coordinates of the two points. So if this is point 2, 3, 4, we'd really have to write this formula as 2 minus 0 quantity squared for x plus 3 minus 0 squared for y plus 4 minus 0 squared for z. But we don't really have to get into all of that because one of the points is the origin, so the minus zeros don't really do anything. So you could just do 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. And then once we get that answer, we have to take the square root of it all. So Ultimately, I'm just going to jump down here. Ultimately, d equals the square root of 29, right? Because 16 and 9 is 25, and 4 is 29. And when you put that in your calculator, just be careful with the rounding, because I get 5.385 something, and it ends up rounding up, but just by a tiny bit. So it's 5.39, barely. And e becomes the best choice. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.